Okay, we have uh, another game. We're going to bring you that game three coming up next. Round of 64, Amputees versus Sophon Cox is going to be coming up in just one moment. But really quickly, I wanted to uh, give a shout out to LolPro. LolPro and they have guides for Dominion gameplay. I wanted to show those off to you really quickly here. If you go to lolpro.com, I'll take you to this screen here. If you go over to the Pro Guides section, you can go ahead and you can scroll down through here. And you can see uh, recently, uh, we've been on a little bit of a uh, little bit of a tear since they announced that they were going to do the Law Pro Dominion Showdown. Uh, they went and got in touch with some of the top-level Dominion competitors who started writing some guides. Uh, Half-Hearted, who this is the brand guide that you want to read. Half-Hearted is the brand player. Uh, Lulu by Mad Supportal. Uh, Mad Supportal, a.k.a. Zemike, is the Lulu player who hasn't lost with Lulu. Uh, see, Painkiller, Elise, and Annie, and Evelyn, he plays for... Uh, Painkiller plays for the top... Uh, current Dominion team pays up on child support, and he plays a lot of AP characters. Uh, Brand, uh, there's a LeBlanc guide by Generic, Fancy Wolf, Northpaw also authoring some guides, Lissick, and Sauron as well. Sauron, who is noted as being the highest ELO Dominion player ever, uh, and he has a guide for Jax, J4, and you want to read those Jax and J4 guides. I'd say you want to read the Syndra one as well. Uh, no one knows this game mode better than Sauron does. He's been playing it for, I believe, the longest amount of time right now of any competitive Dominion player. So if you want to check out some of these, go over to lawpro.com, click on the Pro Guides section, and go ahead and give it a look through. Also, you guys want to learn more about League of Legends? Well, I'll tell you what, Leaguepedia, that is the place to go for it. It is a uh, wiki-based site for League of Legends and Leaguepedia. You want to learn about teams? I mean, just look at this front page. They have all this LCS coverage here on the front. You scroll down a little bit. They feature interviews on here as well. There's a tournament tracker. They have a featured article section, so you can see what's popular at the time. But mostly, the tournament tracker is my favorite thing about it. It lets you know what's going on. Keep up with League of Legends by reading the front page over on League of Legends Wiki. And if you want to learn about something specific, well, there's all sorts of search functions and great things for that as well. So, uh, big thanks to those guys for putting on the show, as well as Curse and Reign of Gaming. Let me go back over and see if the players are ready and see if I can take you into this next game. Yeah, it looks like they are ready to go. We're going to go into Game 3 of the LOL Pro Dominion Showdown Round of 64, Amputees versus Sophonda Cox. And moving over to the champ select screen, looks like the first band is going to be Kha'Zix. Yeah, Kha'Zix and me banned out over there. Sorry about that again. Uh, L30 and Gan, they're going to be bringing the action for this round of 64 act or round of 64 match. Game number three. Kha'Zix going to be banned out right now. Casted in. I'm expecting a Jace, a Cat, or a Jace, a Nidalee, possibly a Wukong, possibly another one. Maybe even a least band would be a very, very interesting pick. There's a Jace band coming out right over there. But Savannah Cox is going to be on the blue side. Amput is going to be on the purple side again. Savannah Cox was on the blue side in game number one, and unfortunately did falter down. They picked up game number two. They're they're ready and rearing and. Again, I always refer to this point, what Ocelot said um, way back when, but Ocelot said this, when you're going in the best of three situation, game number two is a very, very important. Game number one, if you lose that, it's okay. Game number two, if you win that, the person who won that is gonna have a lot of momentum going to game number three. And with that, that is gonna be Savannah Cox's momentum to push them in. Can they win it out? That is the question. Or will amputees, Show that that comeback spirit that they can. I mean, it's it's going to be very vital for both teams to win this one out. But Amputees is going to be on the back foot for the start of this. We saw Nerdok run Malzahar two games in a row. It's possible we'll see it again. And that's one of the things to note about best of threes. The Dominion competitions um, that have occurred outside of this one 
have largely been best of one format. So this is the first opportunity that these teams have really had to play a lot of best of three format games, which means that there are some players out there in the Dominion community that are very good at one or two champions and use those to get through the earlier rounds of tournaments very well. But when they come up against established teams, they run into the problem of being counterbanned or counterpicked out. And we might be seeing that a little bit here. I mean, they know Nerdok uses Mal's. They can capitalize on that. And if he goes Mal's again, they're going to know, oh, this is Nerdok Mal's. This is his style of play. We know how to defeat this because we have gameplay time in on it. And that's why it's very important in League of Legends to have a... A, a, a pretty large champ roster that you can pull through. I mean, there's nothing wrong with having a favorite champion. I mean, I played Katarina for a year, and she's great, but, you know, after a while, uh, you know, you play against people, the same people enough, and you realize, well, you know what? They can defeat this. I need to have more things in my bag of tricks. And then when they forget that you were really good at Katarina, or in Nurok's case, when they forget that you were good at Mal's, then you bust that out and punish them for it. That is the great thing about this game, being able to play all of these different characters, and just when someone gets complacent, you can mix things up on them. Yeah, I mean, the roster pool of, I think, 110 or plus or more, it's almost reaching to that 150 mark that we know from another thing, but, uh, you know, I love pulling out my AP Teemo at uh, mid and Summoner's Rift quite a bit during Season 1. Unfortunately, uh, I don't think it's too, too viable until this point. We do see some um, switch ups. So Amanda Cox is not going to be able to lock in that Vi pick. Circio or somebody else is going to be playing that one. But again, Vi was being used for amputees for the game number one, game number two. But then we're going to see Savannah Cox try to pick that one up with that Fizz pick as well. Fizz, we haven't really seen that um, pick in general for this whole tournament yet. Uh, what do you think about that, Gander? Fizz is. There is definitely some media online if you want to uh, learn more about Fizz. Fizz is a very powerful character in Dominion because of his mobility and his ability to delay is very high because of Playful Trickster or Playful Playful, depending upon what order you press your buttons in. Playful Trickster means that Fizz really only needs health to stay alive. He doesn't really need the MR armor so much because he can dodge the bulk of a champion's damage by dodging the ability entirely. So he's really only taking AA, like auto attack damage, another tertiary uh, damage that he doesn't necessarily need the large amounts of mitigation because he can dodge most of the burst and be okay. The thing is, that's that's Fizz's trick. You, If you engage on him while his playful trickster is down, or worse, Fizz is deathly allergic to silences. If you get a silence on, and I'm, we're seeing Talon over there being picked up, if you get a silence on Fizz, that's really disastrous for him. He tends to be pretty fragile, but since he can dodge the bulk of a, an enemy champion's damage, or an enemy team's damage even sometimes, he can be really dangerous because his damage output is so high. And later on in the game, if he gets those Seastone Trident levels up, then his sustain damage becomes pretty significant as well, especially against champions like Trundle. And I'm really excited to see a Trundle because Trundle's sustain and durability are extraordinary. And Fizz is one of the few champions that can actually put some pressure on him because of Seastone Trident in particular. When you get Seastone Trident and Blackfire Torch, then you really start to soften up some of the heavier characters on the enemy team like Amumu and Trundle. Yeah, and we'll see if the tanks will go down to the Fizzery of uh, Savannah Cox. But we do also have another pick, two picks we're going to be talking about. Uh, we do have Nerdock going to be picking up the Urgot pick, which is a very, very solid bottom laner pick. Does yes. a really lot of therm penetration damage. And again, we reduce the damage, we reduce the armor, we reduce a lot of immobility, or it's a lot of tankiness that's going to be coming in. But usually you use that bottom, we see that with Sauron. But what else do we see about Urgot in general? Urgot is a very safe ranged AD character in top or in the bottom lane. In the bottom lane, he is excellent because of his range. If he's able to tag with that corrosive charge, he can back off a little bit and fire some shots at a longer distance away and be able to more safely deliver harass than other characters can. Also, Terror Capacitor is what makes him powerful in the bottom lane. He can afford to put himself in danger because he has Terror Capacitor to lean on. He can activate that stick his head out ahead in front of the minion wave and fire off a couple of shots and then move back. And then you can't really poke back in return because of that. In combination with the health relic that's up above in the center of the bottom lane, 
if even if he does take a little bit of chip damage past the shield, then he just walks up, grabs a health relic, and walks back. If Urgot can get control of that health relic, he can be very sustainable in the bottom lane. In the top lane, he doesn't really have an escape mechanic, unfortunately. Yes, you can go through people with the hyper uh, kinetic position reverser, but that's uh, gimmicky at best and um, flawed at worst, because sometimes it will put you in the enemy team, you know, you, you shift through with it, pop your terror capacitor, try and run through the enemy side, doesn't always work, and then sometimes it is the great escape, but it's not something as reliable as other characters' escape mechanisms, unfortunately, and for that reason, Urgot is, he likes to hang out in the back and shoot into the, uh, into the fight, um, like other AD carries do, but he tends to play a little bit more shy, because if he is, if you are able to apply some crowd control to him, he's really not going to be able to get away, and has to rely on that innate tankiness that he has in order to be able to survive the fight. So it's a little bit more difficult to employ him, but if he takes stray damage, you can't just burst him down. You can't just dive in and take him out the way you would take out Nezreal or Nash or Varus. Yeah, and I will like to see the Urgot play. We have on the other side the Ari play, and he's talked to him about. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that in just a second, but we do have like a minute left on the play for the delay. It's the low pro Dominion Showdown, round of 64 action, game number three. It's going to be L3 IRD, and Gammon there bringing out the action. Shout outs again to a low pro putting on this great, great tournament. A curse as well, helping out the media webs for Lulpro as well as Linkpedia. Also, shout out to, uh, personally for me. Uh, thank you again, TV to help out uh, me getting this awesome, awesome cast time with Gander. And uh, we're going to start this game number three matchup. Are you guys hyped? Are you guys ready for this one? It's going to be a pretty, pretty awesome battle coming in. I am percent hype bird for this game. I encourage the replacing of the hashtag symbol with a percent sign. It's a little bit of a running gag the Dominion community has. It'd be cool to mm. see that perpetuated here. I'm going to kick over to the loading screen. I have to fix these titles real quick because teams have switched sides once again. Yeah, so Fandacock is going to be on the blue side this time. Amputee is going to be on the red. Really quickly, we never really gone on the, the lineup. Fancy Wolf going to play the J4 for the third time yet again. So you're going to be playing that. Neon Strike by Generic going to be playing the Fizz. We're going to have Kaden going to be playing out the Frostfire Annie. And lastly, but not leastly, Battlecast Urgot for that Nerdock. And it's going to be L30, the Burgundian, some words, one half the casting crew. And what do we have on the other hand, Gander? Well, Bird, on the other side, we have Science playing as Trundle, Strogan McHawk playing as Amumu, Dual Power playing as Talon, Metal Fenrir playing as Brand, and New V3 playing as Ari. And their powers combined comprise the team Amputees. Yeah, and we'll be getting into this one just very shortly. Again, I feel like Savannah Cox has some momentum, can do some good stuff, but they picked up Vi. Vi, early game. Do you see her doing really well, or... Early game, Vi tends to suffer a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. Later game, when she gets some items, because she... If you've played Vi, she feels a little slow at first, mm -hmm. but once you, once you get some equipment on her... So her early game, she's not terribly threatening... I mean, if you ignore her, you're going to die, and you don't want to do that at all, because that's unfortunate. But she's definitely better the longer the game goes on. Yeah, and uh, we'll see how that happens. And again, Ari's going to be over in the bottom lane for this one. It's going to be interesting to see how Navy 3 will rock it down. Again, a very great deal. It's Ari using some of this rift quite a bit, just for that single, single target initiation, single target engage as well. Once you charm in somebody, pretty much someone will die. But in Dominion, it's going to be used as a very, very good duelist. And I believe New V3 has been shown to really rock out the Nerdog. At least Nerdog's Malzahar. But we're going to see Nerdog playing this Urgot. We're going to have a lot of changes over in the bottom lane. And a lot of changes coming up for this game. So Savannah Cox, Amputees, I hope you guys are ready. We're going to have some rocking, rocking action. And whoever wins this is going to advance to the round of 32. Uh, you'll see highlighted on the screen, viewers, I have Grez's Spectral Lantern. This is an amazing item. This, along with Hextech Sweeper, are probably two of the most powerful items in the game. And we do have a little bit of a pause mm -hmm. going on here. Okay, we're just, uh, looks like what happened, um, during the, um, the disconnects and things like that, um, we lost dual power, so... 
amputees is bring in one of their subs and we just have to pull them into the game and then we will have a game to give to you guys. It looks like they're going to bring in Volandum. Uh, Volandum who has been playing Dominion for quite a long time and is one of the uh, the very very few people who have actually played um, competitive Dominion on two different servers. Um, he played a little bit on the Europe West server back when it was running its Dominion tournament as well. And there's not a lot of people who have done that, so Volandum is a very experienced player. It'll be interesting to see what to do. Let's see, they're determining right now what the, the pick order and things like that are. And then we will go right on over to the champ select screen. Sorry for stopping my sentences constantly, but I'm reading and doing my best to do a Captain Kirk impression at the same time. Okay, it looks like they have it figured out. Excellent. And let's throw over to the launcher. You guys can't Bam. see the you guys can't see the game name. I really want to show it to you. <laughs> uh, was I about to say the summer blockers right quick? But yeah, DC Fancy versus Ampu. That that's the game name. There's I'm um, say it out there. there's there's little Easter eggs. I want uh, any viewer who watches uh, League of Legends uh, competition or otherwise. Um, these are just throwaway bands that you're seeing uh, because they already know what the bands are. These bands mm -hmm. are the same as from the last game, so they are simply just clicking through them as as fast as possible. Uh, there's, little, there's little easter eggs to watch for when you're watching League of Legends casting, or I mean, if you watch other games also. Um, any any text field that the players control, always look at that, in which case it's the game name. If you're watching an online uh, an online cup of a League of Legends tournament, always look at what they titled the game name, because there's a lot of like inside humor that is written into the game name names. And also, watch the commentator's cursor. Or not the commentator, but whoever has camera control of the event that's going on, watch their cursor. Because sometimes they will, they will like, highlight things by pointing at with the cursor when they otherwise wouldn't have time to talk about it or not be able to talk about it at all because they don't have a mic in the case of any tournament has a dedicated observer. Uh, OGN, for example, I mean, their, their observer's pretty great. And you should check out their... Um, you should watch those mouse movements. Sometimes the... The OBS will highlight some things that you wouldn't have seen otherwise. Uh, usually this involves things like them clicking on champions so you can see what abilities they have leveled up, what things they have on cooldown, other specific stuff like that. Sometimes it will be them pointing down at the mini-map and circling something that's going on, or other little highlights. So there are, there are a couple of little uh, pro strats, viewers out there, if you guys want to uh, add those to your stream viewing repertoire of moves that you have. There's just little things that can tell you further information about the game. Looks like we have all of the picks uh, run the same picks as last time, so I mean, all that Fizz talk, all that Orgot talk is all still very relevant. Uh, they lost dual power, so they're going to sub out Volandum instead, and I know dual power can play Talon, but I don't know if Volandum's Talon is as good as dual power's is. I don't know him as a Talon player. So maybe he has it pocketed and I've just never seen it on a, on a stream before, you know, maybe he's been playing it in, in solo queue, or in houses, and I just haven't run into it. But the things that I know Volandum, the thing I know Volandum for the most is Kog'Maw, uh, but he doesn't play that uh, too competitively, he plays other champions instead. But it'll be interesting to see how this affects their gameplay, and if this affects their strategy at all, uh, having a, a sub in at the last moment. It definitely is, and again, the momentum, although now with this long negated pause, might not be so much on either team. Savannah Cox is a little bit worried about their DCs, amputees now, playing with a new sub. Everything's pretty much uh, on a level plane, so we'll see how that will come into effect. But overall, Volandum, known as more of an AP mage caster player, loves his LeBlanc, loves his uh, Annie as well. well. We'll see if he can do it with the AD side. Using that lady assassinage, that will be the talent up onto the play. Um, really quickly, we did, talked about Ari, we talked about talent a little bit. I mean, overall, what do you think? Because we didn't really uh, go into it while we were at pause. I think we talked about it a little bit, but what do you think about those two picks? I'm sorry, repeat that last line real quick. Sorry, I had uh, added the Ari and the talent. What do you think okay. about those picks? Okay, yeah. um, talent I mentioned a little bit earlier. Talent with the silence is going to be great against Fizz. 
because Silence is really shut Fizz down, because if you can lock him out of his Playful Trickster, then you can uh, splatter him, unfortunately. That's a very, very brutal way to say it, but it's also, unfortunately, uh, very correct. And um, there's, there's certain places online you can learn more about Fizz, by the way, if you want to uh, check that out. Maybe someone in the chat knows. You can tell people. Uh, but Ari... Ari's a character we do not see very often. Uh, there's two very, very good Ari players in the Dominion community, Comfort Arius and Subcutie, a.k.a. Micaiah, a.k.a. Kaya7, a.k.a. Mitsuru8. She keeps changing her name. But Ari is a very, very powerful champion. I feel one that's uh, underplayed because her taunt is great. It's an amazing crowd control. Its duration's pretty long. She has a line effect that hits multiple targets, and the fact that it goes out away and then comes back, Orb of Deception can hit twice, but... The damage isn't so important, the fact that it lingers on the battlefield for longer than other abilities do, so it zones a little bit harder, and it interrupts captures a little bit more, because it has that extra time where it's actually active and out on the, uh, on the field of play, which is really useful. Spirit Rush, great escape. It's really good for you know, getting away or securing kills. And Foxfire, well, Foxfire's a damaging ability. I mean, you don't really have anything on that. But it's mostly that taunt is amazing, and Orbit Deception is really good for interrupts and delays. Ori's a really good character. She's difficult to capture and kill if she has Spirit Rush up. If she doesn't have Spirit Rush up, you'll know, because Ori will play a lot safer when she does not have a Spirit Rush available to her. That is true, and the passive going into the play for Ari, I mean, giving that spell vamp, getting that health regen as well, just makes her a very, very vital adult duelist. So really cool to see. Uh, this play, Game number three of this round of 64 action coming into play against Savannah Cox on the blue side, Amputees on the purple slash red side. I mean, we've been waiting for this for quite a long time. Just a recap of the whole series. I mean, yeah, I'm sorry we're going to have to spoil a little bit, but coming back from six points, they had six points left. Amputees came in one game number that one. The clock was stopped at six to two for like two minutes. That was so scary. <laughs> And then in game number two, Savannah Cox came in really strong, shut down amputees, and we'll see if game number three will be the same thing for Savannah Cox, or will amputees keep it going? Again, thanks to all the sponsors coming out from here, Lopro, Curse, Leakpedia, and um, yeah, we're about to get this game on. And Rain of Gaming? Heard Don't forget Rain of Gaming in there. Oh yeah, and Rain of Gaming, that is true. And really quickly, I heard that Valanum was the seed, unfortunately, so... There's going to be another pause, but it won't be as long. Oh, no. Volandum. Volandum <laughs> is one of those players that has the disconnect on, like, login. Uh, like, Ew. other people do. They're, like, WowX has that as well, and a couple mm -hmm. other people do. But they usually just log back in at the beginning of the game, and it's never really that big of a, a thing. It's not quite as cataclysmic. But thank you for the heads up, though. I appreciate knowing what I'm mm -hmm. getting into. And uh, real quick, I'm just going to read down the... Uh, let's reintroduce the teams for anyone who's just joined the stream. This is Game 3 of the Law Pro Dominion Showdown, round of 64. Both teams tied up one-to-one. -one. Whoever wins this game is going to advance on to the round of 32 game. Uh, it is going to be Sofonda Cox versus Amputees. Sofonda Cox's team, Fancy Wolf playing as Jarvan IV, Nerdok playing as Urgot, Generic playing as Fizz, Circio playing as Vi, and Caden playing as Annie. I am one half of your commentators. I am Gander of the gaming clan Vato Clan, and co-commentating with me is... L3RD, the bird getting in some words. We're going to see the team of amputees going to be comprised of Trundle, going to be played by Science, Metal Fin, we're going to be playing that Apple, wow, brand. Uh, Shrigan McHawk going to be playing the Moo Moo, Foxfire R going to be played by New V3, and Volandum checking in now as a sub for amputees, going to be playing that Talon. Again, guys, this is going to be a really interesting matchup. Again, the rubber match, the rubber game going to be coming into play for this one. Hopefully the team of the NPC is ready, or will Savannah and Cox taking that momentum from game number two, bring it into game number three, and hold it up. For those of you guys that have been uh, following us through the pause and got to hear us talk for 20 minutes, uh, you can follow me in my gaming media on Twitter, at VatoClan, and you can find my uh, produced video media on my clan's YouTube channel, youtube.com slash VatoClan, including a full hour and a half breakdown about Fizz in Dominion. Dominion Breakdown number 5 Fizz, if you want to check that out after the tournament is over. That's a definite. You can also find me on the Twitter webs and the YouTube webs, twitter.com slash l 3 ird YouTube just a little bit different. It's youtube.com slash l 3 brd I do do summon a rip mostly, but I've been uh, had the pleasure of Casper of Gander for quite a bit for Dominion, so this is one of those things that 
I do love on my spare time and I do love seeing a lot of these good Dominion teams and a lot of these you know, newer teams coming into play trying to just get a taste, get a little bit of love for this Crystal Scar. Yeah, if you guys have not competed in a uh, in a tournament before, whether you play Summer's Rift, whether you play Twist Tree Line, whether you play Dominion, I encourage you to go out and do it. It's really an experience, and it's it's a lot of fun because it adds a little bit more excitement to the game. You know, knowing that there's actually potentially something at stake, it's it's a lot of fun to do. I highly encourage that you uh you know get some friends together, sign up for an online cup, you know, uh, something like this that uh you know, Law Pro puts on. Uh, they have uh they do tournaments and things, so. Playing some stuff, guys. It's a, it's really an experience, and you never know what'll happen. Maybe you're really good, and you don't know it. There's, uh, there's always those teams that show up in competition once in a while, and they just blow you away. And it's like, why weren't these guys playing for months, man? So yeah, that's Volandum with the, uh, the disconnect thing. He should be back in just a moment. I have Katie A on already. I didn't have to click it. Whoa, that's interesting. <laughs> that's never happened before. That's pretty cool, though. And uh, just to look at the team comps again for anyone that has um, you know missed out on it, uh, Trundle is an extremely sustainable champion, and he's very difficult to unseat from a point, and he's also a pretty good bottom laner, and we'll probably see him actually in the bottom lane. Uh, we're seeing Amumu, Brand, and Ari. Now, Brand forces positioning because of his AoEs and because of Pyroclasm, so you do not want to stand next to other people if there's a Brand on the other team. Amumu, stun, lots of AoE damage. Ari, we'll be talking about Ari a moment ago, and Talon, Talon, Silence, he's a great assassin. The amount of distance that you can cover, if you just hit the edge of Fog of War, you hit Shadow Assault, you run out while stealthed, and then you cutthroat to someone, just surprised, you just went all the way across an entire lane. It's, the, the, the surprise factor is brutal. And then you're silenced, and you can't respond immediately, and then you get raked. And you wait to drop that rake, too. You wait until your silence wears off to rake them, because the rake has a slow. That way, if they do use an escape mechanic, like an arcane shift from an Ezreal, for example, you wait till the silence wears off, or right before it wears off, you pop rakes. So that way, when they do arcane shift or 90 caliber net away, they're slowed when they arrive at their destination, and it gives you more time to catch up. If you pop that rake immediately, some of that rake slow duration is going to be eaten by the silence, and then they're going to use their escape mechanic and get their speed back faster. You don't want that. The timing is very important to Talon. Yeah, then definitely we're going to go back into the play. Talon going to be very, very, like, one of those picks that is, I guess, in the words of the Summoner's Rift, the Kha'Zix resets. I mean, you don't get resets with Talon over, overall, in general, but the Kha'Zix, I mean, the Talon just initiate is just ridiculous. Hey, make sure and, we're copped alive on the pause, by the way. Yep, and cool. so it's going to be really, really important for the Talon. Vlandum really going to play it out, and play it out for the team at Amputees. On the other hand, though, I just wanted to say shout-outs to all the writers that were inside the chat room. I think Riot Silver was around. I also want to thank out the uh, Mr. Rival. Riot Rival is going to be chilling out with us, as well as Gnome Sane, the team manager for Vulcan. I appreciate their uh, help of the social media outlook, and they should push for the Reddit webs and the Twitter. And if you guys haven't gotten this um, word out yet, definitely pre spread it out. Spread the word about day number one of the Low Pro Dominion Showdown. Now this is going to go on for two days. I want to add special shout out again to Riot Rival, Riot Gnome. Uh, shout out also to Vesh and Riot Danny, Scarzard, and Manwolf Axe Boss, all friends of the Dominion community. You guys are all real cool. The work you do at Riot is awesome. And I don't know who exactly, but shout out to a Riot's and Riot's entire art team because the yes. art for this game is beautiful. Both teams end up to the top. Oh, Vi, immediate interception. This is a play we don't see too often. The early cut in, trying to pick off some early kills. They get one on Talon immediately. Metal Fenrir low on hit points as well. Things starting off with a bang. Strogan not quite able to tag Vi a little bit too far away in order to be able to connect. And this is paying off in a huge way right off the bat for Sophon yes. the Cox. Yes, I found out it hasn't made this play, and I expected the teams to actually do this. Unfortunately, it was right onto the sub of that and taking down so early. And we do have another pause. Unfortunately, I think we're going to have another disconnection at the moment. I, I hope we don't. That'd make me very sad. But that play at the beginning, typically both teams will move up to the windmill. They'll get into a little bit of back and forth poke against each other over who's going to be able to control it. But once in a while, you will fire some shots over the wall. 
or you'll have faster champions that can set up in the bushes before the other team gets there. Or in that mm -hmm. case, you take a hard right, you dive in with some crowd control, and hope it connects. Or, you know, you're just really good and you lead it well. But usually it's a little bit blind because you don't know exactly where they're going to come out or what their order is going to be in unless you have an early vision item. And they did not have an early vision item. The early vision item was on the opposite team. And that's why you can blow the, uh, the sweeper or grezzes if you have them on those approaches over this wall on the fruit stand. This is the fruit stand in the middle, guys. Just so you know. There's a little fruit. There's apples. They sell uh, cactus, berries. What are those called? There's a word for them. Prickly pear. That's right. So Volandum and Brand in the middle of the map waiting for Trendle to catch up, and they, with control of the top tower, they have two people hanging, up in, hanging out in response. Annie and Fizz in the middle of the map by the speed shrine. They move up quickly to the top to respond if needed to. And the bottom, Circio going for the gank. Orb Deception does not connect. And Noob V3 is going to be taken down. Did not retreat over towards the health relic. Trendle escaping up top. Gets through to the windmill. And Metal Fenrir is caught by Generic and Caduin. Yeah, Caden and Caden. Did a great job. I'm gonna get that gank in off on the team now. Science does get to neutralize over at the windmill. Generic and everybody else gonna go able to save out the point. Generic gonna go disable. We're gonna see the click off from Science, and now Science gonna get engaged upon Generic. Can't keep up the damage, but we do see Kate and everybody else gonna save it out. And the alternating in caps is important. You see, Annie breaks off after um, you know fit after Fizz is available to begin capturing again. There is a delay between when you're interrupted and when you can actually begin channeling on a point again. So if you have two people pass it back and forth, then you will be able to maintain more capture time overall. And while a tower is being captured, its gun does not fire. It's very important to note. And Vlandum being interrupted by Jarvan, not going to be able to secure the Storm Shield first team this time. Yeah, Fancy Wolf going to go capture that Storm Shield for himself. Again, the static ship proc that it gives, it gives an extra damage or effective HP and be able to give that a little bit of extra damage, so it's going to be really good to see the tank take that one. Shrogan going to try to do the same thing. Fancy Wolf going to start it up. It looks like Shrogan's going to go connect onto Fancy Wolf, and I don't think that was the smartest of ideas. No, Shrogan, with the Curse of Sad Mummy, stunned by Annie, will not be able to escape. Oh, Chum the Wire's in a great position! It tags both Volandum and Science. Venrir standing outside with the fire, tries to contribute as best he can but unfortunately he's not able to put anyone down. Strogan come back with the revive. Tibbers, good little Tibbers, scouting out for Annie. Let's Annie know where any threats may be. Science returning with the revive also. And here's the revive play. They died, they've revived, and now they're back at the windmill before the enemy team is able to arrive there, which should give them an opportunity to make a push for this. I don't know if Fizz can quite handle this on his own. He Playful Trickster's over, but takes the stun afterwards. Playful Trickster on cooldown is going to be bailed out by Vi, fortunately. Oh, Generic now in a little bit of trouble. You're gonna see the capture. No, he's gonna go playful tricks to out. Now, Fancy Wolf, Circeo, you're gonna fight it. It's 2v4. Circeo, gonna take a lot of damage from the front. You have a land, I'm doing some good damage with Rake, and we're gonna see if Fancy Wolf can get out of there. Trogan is really low. Here comes assassination attempt from Generic. He's gonna get playful tricks there, but not enough damage. And the minions tipped that tower over to a full capture, and Volandum is going to chase Vi away, and Science getting beat up on by Fancy Wolf, and. Caden, science is going to be okay. He retreated. It looked like the bad things were in his future, but oh dear. Nope, he's still alive after that disintegrate. He's just fine. Stun on Caden, but no way to follow up, unfortunately. Science with the exhaust on Fancy Wolf, not able to seal the deal, unfortunately. Yeah, generic coming back into play at the end of it all. Picks up the kill onto Brand and keeps it going for the team of Savannah Cox. Recapturing the windmill, but we do see in the bottom left the claw being contested upon. New V3 has been doing such a great job as the duelist of the team of amputees. And get out of there just for a little bit moment. Spirits rush, and we're gonna see a gank yet again. Stun into, silence into, rake. Crowd control one after another being applied to Vi. Silence is not going to let her dash away. When she has that applied to her, it's a ping going off in the center of the map. Yeah, and we'll see how this will come again. Science gonna go talk to Generic. Generic gonna take a little bit of damage. Kaden gonna help out, but now Metal Finry and Philandum, they're searching for something fishy. They're searching for that little fish in the sea. Generic to get caught out, but they can't find anything. They find a bite in the middle, and here comes engagement. And Circio taking a lot of damage. Pillar connects. Circio forced back out of the fight. That's another good combination between Jarvan and Fizz's ultimates. 
Science and Storgan, the last people alive. They take a lot of damage from Annie. Timber's beating up on Amumu. Amumu is made out of bandages. He can easily catch on fire. Is going to retreat. Has the Storm Shield. Circles around for Fancy Wolf to put a little bit of damage on him, but Fancy Wolf with the shield is not too concerned about it. In the meantime, new V3 yet again. Many at this bottom battle it had to be pushed down Nerdok. So Nerdok has to back away from this one, but still has some good items right now. He has some armor penetration. He does have that prospective blade to mitigate or push on some damage. Unfortunately, not enough actually coming out from the team of Savannah They're in the bottom lane. Maybe a switch is going to be needed, but something is going to have to happen. More ganks, and that's why J4 is round that. Fizz has a Hextech Sweeper now, which is going to give him more movement speed, which is going to. That's one of the reasons why you saw him up there so quickly. Science being shut down. Point goes neutral. Now, Fizz with the Hextech Sweeper is a really good item on him because if you do transition to a Lich Bane later, that's even more movement speed when you have those two items combined with each other. We do see J4 going to be able to pick up the gank over at bottom, and we do see the windmill captured up yet again for Savannah Cox. So they knew that J4 is around somewhere over near bottom, but they still couldn't, they weren't able to capture up the windmill point. So a missed chance opportunity for amputees, while on the other hand, Savannah Cox trying to come in strong. And Jarvin being zoned out by Volandum with Talon, wants to chase him away. Good job on him. And he's gonna try and pick up the storm shield. Brand cannot get in range quick enough, though, to interrupt that from happening. Yeah, and uh, we're coming back in this 444 to 317 on the point score at the moment. Gander, I mean, the teams are rocking in the action. Is this the Ooh. way that FPTs has to go? Wow, Strogan's gonna get in game spawn. Yeah, Strogan, I mean, that would have been a great opportunity to set up for a play. He was right in the middle of the enemy team, could have dropped a curse to Sad Mummy or something, but unfortunately, there was really no one to back him up when that engagement started. New V3 coming up from the bottom to try and help out. Unfortunately, not going to be such a help. Aced! And Sofonda Cox in control of this game. They look like they're going to kick this over into a 5-cap, actually. Sofonda really mean business here. Yeah, they just showed some really, really strong power yet again. And Mumu getting cut out in the middle everywhere. They do see the capture point, the ejective going into the team of Savannah Cox. And yeah, they are five capped and they're ready and primed to go for this one. They're going to go oh. back to the three to two, but. Nerdok barely interrupted in the bottom point by a Mumu, the despair, just barely catching him. And Nerdok, Nerdok might be able to fight his way out of this. New B3 is capturing the tower, but no, once Talon was able to connect, looks like he's going to go down. He yeah, was able to finish them. off a Mumu in the process, but there was a lot of Nexus health drained in a very short amount of time. I believe they lost 70 health from that 5 cap, which is a significant portion. Also as well with the objective point coming in, they do have the bonus damage coming out from the team of Savannah Cox, so that 10% damage is going to be very, very crucial onto this gank. Science a little bit weary, did not want to walk right into the speed shrine. But Metal Fenrir, everybody else, they're, they're looking, they're looking. They know something's up. Anything. They don't have their Grezzes, so they're trying to be careful. Jarvid connects with an Airborne and an Airborne from Fizz as well. Fenrir taking a lot of damage, is able to get it out of the fight, can circle around and re-engage for a little bit more damage. No, he's going to go for the recall instead. New V3 once again coming up from the bottom, firing off shots on Circio. Circio ignited, being chased away. Spirit Rush uh, fired off. That's one, that's two. Last one used to secure the kill, not to escape. So New V3 does not have an escape mechanic, and Annie is going to send Ari back to the Summoner platform. Meanwhile, over at the windmill, Generic still getting chased around. That playful tricks are going to be able to save out yet another little fish off the sea. So great job of Generic getting that one down. Science is going to try to push up with this main wave, but the clear coming out from Generic just from the AoE damage alone from Playful Trickster was enough to calm it down. Oh, the exhaust going down. Science is going to be talked to by Generic, and I don't think that was the smartest idea. But Science is going to try to get out of there, try to capture a point, or get helped by Metal Finrear. And Science may be able to get away. Uh, generic, low on health. Generic, generic, those are minions. Generic, no. I'm sorry, Generic. Yeah, Playful Trickster does do a lot of AoE damage, so it's very good for wave clear if you put points in it first. And I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, no, he, uh, yeah, it looks like he went for Playful Trickster first out of his abilities, then Sea Stone later. Vlandum now stunned all of the crowd control on Vlandum. Shadow Assault to try and escape. Can he kill Circio? Nope. Disintegrate from Annie is going to stop that from happening. Yeah, the vision from the brush was just not metal frame. We were not caught off in the AP, AP battle, but Kaden just dodges out the skill shot and says, Ooh, I have a skill a shot. Mumu with the escape through Annie. Is that going to be enough? No. Annie, Annie picking up the triple kill. I could have swore that was 
the standard, but that's okay. And he will take it. Vlandum, good interrupt. Dives in, breaks them both off of the point, retreats immediately. Brand is going to arrive and takes the damage from Fizz. Still scares Annie into stopping capturing the point, however. Cataclysm thrown down to kill Vlandum. Science can't quite get to him uh, with an AA, but manages to pick him up anyway. And Fizz, Seastone escapes through Brand, is retreating down to the lower part of the map. Gets run into a Moomoo, and oh, the Banish Toss does not quite connect, unfortunately. Junior just played like a god right there. He he Seastone tried in uh, through. He made sure he got in with that playful trickster. First thing that happened, the Pyroclasm tried to hit onto Generic, got denied, and then that bandage sauce right at the end of everything. Generic has been playing like a menace that is like a canicogen that's been working really well for the team of Savannah Cox, bringing it up the mobility. Yeah, generic, generic is motivated. 100%. He wants to win this game. He wants to go on to the round of 32. After all of those pauses and delays, he wants to see the next round of this tournament. And his team and he are determined to bring that to happen. And Jarvan dives onto the point to try and defend it. Defensive Garrison activated, slowing down the capture, helping to resist those minions. Fancy Wolf doing the best that he can to delay on the point, while Vlandum's Talon tries to run down Fizz. There's the exhaust. Really helped him out against... The, oh, and he, oh, he's barely alive, gets the slow on Tibbers, because you know if Tibbers closed distance, Tibbers' passive AoE would have been enough damage to kill him. And he had to stand in it for a moment there, runs by Tibbers, looking to connect, and he gets the kill on Annie, but it's very dangerous to go for Fizz. Oh, Fizz almost walked into that. Very scary up here at the top point. Both of them have to stay present, though, or the other one can capture the tower. So neither one can recall right now. It's all about the minions right now. The purple caster minions are going to be there, and no, nope, it's going to uh -oh. be the recall from Valandum. And Valandum's going for the recall, which means they're going to give Fizz the opportunity to take it. Fizz is going to get it. Not a fan of that recall, but there are two members of the team. It's 2v1 against Annie for the moment. Trundle makes for a very good dive, although Fizz is healed up a little bit from the... Oh, the pyroclasm bounces. Those were pretty nice. That cooks Fizz, uh, Fizz up to a uh, nice broil and defeats him, but the enemy team is still in control of the tower. Yeah, the amputees and everybody else going to try to come in and try to delay and disrupt them a little bit more. Caden going to get some good damage. It's going to be Socio and Caden taking a lot of damage from the break. And Valandum should be able to finish this one up. There's there we one, go. There's one, two of Strogate and Valandum, and it should be the windmill going back to the amputees. Fancy Wolf going to get denied for a little bit. Fancy Wolf going to come in, flag toss in, gets that damage down. Good job by Savannah Cox, and now Strogate McCock. It's gonna have to go back. Unfortunately, that sad little Moo Moo is gonna be sadder even more. Science not using the sweeper to approach. He instead used it at the very beginning of the fight. Uh, Fizz, good chum the waters, landing on Metal Fender, lands a playful trickster combo, quickly takes him down to about half health. Vi picking up the double kill, and Metal Fender being stalked by Fizz. The playful trickster damage so much. Yeah, and damage coming in. It's gonna be able to cap up yet another point, possibly. Volando gonna go. Try to get off and make sure that he can deny that point being captured. So there's still everyone backing away. This is looking pretty grim for amputees at this moment, but they did come back from a really, really low score game number one. Game number two, it didn't look that way in game number three. It's looking at the same way, but amputees, they have to have this prayer of hope, and they're going to try to push it onto the bottom. And the bottom gank from Volandum comes down to help out Noob V3 against Nerdok, and Urgot gets sent back to base. Looks like they're bringing a couple people down to help. No, looks like maybe Urgot has that. They're trying to secure the Storm Shield. Jarvan interrupts that. Three people on Jarvan, not sure how I feel about it. Jarvan with a Cataclysm to keep Metal Fenrir boxed in. That's all the battery going down. Metal Fenrir is going to lock in. No, he's still alive until that salt, uh, oh, salt breaker got in there. And we do see signs coming into play. Gonna go get captured down by Chum the Waters. Stroke him back. Oh, wow. Knocked back mid bandage toss. That's yeah, interesting. I, that was actually unfortunate for the team. And we're gonna see Generic just back away. But it is gonna be amputees picking the Storm Relic. But I don't think they're gonna be able to capture up at any more points. Safonda so Cox having done a very good job uh, this game, especially with that early, that five cap earlier that kicked 70 Nexus health off of amputees' base. Safonda so Cox, who went down one at the beginning of the series to come back up potentially 
two points to take the series 2-1, but they need to hold on to the windmill for a little bit longer, and this is going to be the last attempt Amputees has to win this game, unless they can maybe get a bottom neutral off Urgot, but I think he's too tanky for Ari to be able to pull that off. Defensive Garrison, though, shuts that down entirely. The mix-up, keeping them off the point, not being able to capture, and Safonda Cox is going to take this series 2-1 after going down one game in the first set and up the following two to take the series and advance on to the round of 32. Yeah, and we're going to be going into the round of 32 in just a little bit. But just want to reiterate something, though. Savannah Cox, they were post they, they had the game number one in hand. They were up 300, 300 plus points to six. They lost the first game so, so hardly. But to come back to show that result, they went out game number two and game number three. Shows that they might be bringing out something today, and hopefully we'll see that throughout the tournament. But the round of 32, we're going to get some good teams on the action. Just don't you fret, don't you worry again. For the low pro Dominion Showdown, it has been Elther AD and Gander. We'll start out round of 32 in just a little. Yeah, we're just going to kick over to uh, a commercial real quick as we get this next game set up. Thank you very much, viewers, for sticking around. We're going to see that round of 32 game.